you haven't met with me and you're pre-professional, you need to make an appointment and come in and visit. I do this one-on-one. -on -one. Just give me advance notice. If you're going into uh, podiatry, I may have to do a little bit of homework because I haven't had a request for podi podiatry in probably uh, seven or eight years. <laughs> These are the people that are on the uh, pre-med committee. <clears throat> if you have them in class, you want, might want to make sure that they know you. In fact, in your science classes, you might want to make sure that your science faculty know you because they're going to have to write an evaluation. You don't want them to write, like, I don't even know this person. Who is he? <coughs> Uh, I'm the advisor for just about every health-related program except nursing. I don't think they trust me in the nursing department. And technically, pharmacy. Uh, Dr. Shake in chemistry is the advisor for the pre-pharmacy. I've done a lot of it because I, I know what the requirements are. I have a listserv there. If you're not on it, you need to get on it. That top part, send an email to that listserv and type into the body of the message and you'll be on it. I send out maybe once a month, maybe three or four times a month, information about any pre-health related area that I get. Uh, UMS requirements, pretty simple. About eight, nine courses, something like that. Two courses in biology. You're not gonna get in with just two courses in biology unless you're a superstar, okay? It's not gonna happen. I have a lot of post packs coming back and say, I wanna take those two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 courses. They don't have to take the English because they've already had it. And they may already have the math. So they have to take eight courses. I'm gonna take my eight courses and go to med school. Chances that that happening are pretty slim. They're gonna be competing against people who have a lot of biology. On your admissions, when the admissions committee looks at your application, they wanna see some upper level courses. They wanna know that you can be able to handle junior and senior level courses. You could meet the biology requirement by taking biology 1400 and 1401. Two general biology courses. Not very challenging. Everybody in your position should get an A in a course like that. How about some senior level mammalian phys, cell biology, molecular biology? There you're gonna get challenged a little more. That's what they wanna see. Two courses in gen chem, two courses in organic. We have a, a number of post backs who in a hurry sometimes take the uh, MCAT without having completed all the requirements. I know of a few instances where they were successful, but most of the time, <laughs> if you take it without all the prerequisites, your scores aren't gonna be that great. Two courses in organics, one they're gonna look at. For you people that are in organic, you can understand that. Organic Chem 1 and 2 are the only difficult courses there, the only ones. Uh, physics, two courses. Math, two courses, or one calculus. One calculus. What's going to look better on your application? Med school, dental school to, for a job, trig in college algebra, or a semester or two of calculus? Okay, you want to enhance your application. If you're good in math, take calculus. If you're not good in math, don't take calculus and get a C in it. Take remedial algebra if they take, actually they won't take that. Take whatever you can to pass. And two courses in English, you'll get that by default in your general ed electives. Some other requirements. Typically their average GPA is about 3.6 almost every year between 3.6 and 3.7. MCAT scores average between 29 and 30. The maximum you get on the MCAT is 45. There's three sections to it. Life science, this is about 60% biology and 40% organic chemistry. 15 the most you can get. Physical science, this is one half gen chem and one half physics. And then verbal reasoning, this is anything they want to ask really although this is considered a science test this I consider this more of a reading test good readers score better on an MCAT than poor readers good readers with less science background will score better than science people that are poor readers why is that you're a philosophy major you're a history major you're a English lit major if you're those types of majors you tend to have to read a lot and you're a good reader Look at, a, look at a practice MCAT test. They give you a paragraph to read. Nine times out of 10, the answers are in there somewhere. And then the questions are multiple choice. That good reader, just by reading it one time, can describe the important parts of it and what's fluff and what's BS. The poor reader will read it, look at the question, and go back and try to find the answer, and it ain't gonna work. 
okay? Uh, other important factors, your transcript, obviously they're gonna look at that. Lots of W's in on there. When did those W's occur? Your freshman year? Well, they're for, very forgiving of that. Your junior and senior year? It ain't gonna work, your junior and senior year, okay? Well, I took organic chem o over four times and I finally got an A, well, big deal. Their response is when you take organic chem over, they expect you to get an A. A B, you're not that good if you have to take it twice and get a B. How many times in med school do you get to take classes over? You might be able to flunk one or two classes. You don't get to take classes over. Your interview, absolutely vitally important. You're gonna have a 60 minute interview, typically with two faculty members and a med student. 